Yeah, thank you, John. Good morning, everybody. Uh, what you see here is just the globally average temperature during the 20th century. And uh, you can clearly identify the long-term warming trend. And we all believe that this long-term warming trend is anthropogenic in nature, is man-made. However, you see also a lot of fluctuations superimposed on this trend, interannual, as Tim has pointed out. Uh, but also decadal scale variations, for instance, uh, from the 40s to the 70s, the temperatures dropped and some discussion was going on whether or not we are heading uh, uh, towards a new ice age. And most recently, in the recent decades, we had quite a strong increase in temperature. And now the discussion is basically going on whether this reflects some kind of uh, acceleration of global warming. Now, uh, I have four points I would like to discuss. First of all, why decadal prediction? Second, the mechanisms of decadal variability. Third, oops, um, what is the potential? What is the decadal predictability potential? And finally, the challenge is what does it need uh, to uh, realize the decadal predictability potential that actually exists? All right, so first point, why decadal prediction? Now, people who know me, at least uh, my German colleagues, uh, uh, know that I do a lot of media work, okay? There is almost no day uh, in the year where I'm not called uh, by some media person, okay? And uh, so they basically think about global warming as a kind of slowly evolving process and a monotonic process, okay? So each year is warmer than the preceding year. However, we all know there is variability, okay? And this variability uh, may look like this. This has been actually derived from the 20th century by just removing some uh, exponential fit. And the two are, of course, superimposed, okay? And then the real evolution of, say, globally average temperature would look like this. And then you see right away, okay, it may well happen that you enter a decade or maybe even two, you know, when the temperature cools all right, relative to the present level, all right? And then, you know, I know what, what's going to happen, you know. I, I will get, you know, millions of phone calls, you know, uh, uh, what's going on. So uh, is global warming disappearing, you know? Have you lied on us, you know? Uh, so, uh, and therefore, this is the reason why we need to address the cicadal prediction issue. All right, so uh, just a few examples of decadal variability during the 20th century. Uh, one example which is uh, very well known for many decades now, and I know Tim, for instance, you know, uh, published some papers more than 20 years about, uh, uh, Sahelian rainfall. So this is the Sahelian rainfall for the last 100 years or so, and you see these strong multi-decadal fluctuations. Uh, we see this uh, prolonged drought uh, that this region uh, went through. And however, you can see some stabilization during the recent years. And you know, what we all really want to know is you know, what will the next one, two, or maybe three decades hold for us. Second example, hurricane activity. This is just a little movie of Hurricane Katrina. Uh, I think hurricanes are uh, uh, very famous since the year 2005. 2005 was the record year. We never had in the instrumental record a year with more hurricanes. Uh, however, if you look at the record, okay, so here uh, you see the number of tropical storms, so tropical storms plus hurricanes or only the major hurricanes in dark blue, uh, you see, see a lot of variability. And it's hard, you know, at least uh, if you remove the year 2005 to see any a significant long-term trend here. So the record is basically dominated by interannual and especially by decadal variability. And the last point is sea level. Okay, same holds for sea level. We know there are climate modes, internal climate modes, like the Pacific Decadal Oscillation or the Atlantic Multidecadal Oscillation and so on. And these modes have, of course, also an impact on the sea level, mostly through changes in the winds. And if you look at the trend, the recent trend uh, from uh, uh, published in, in the last IPCC report, you see quite some regional variation in the trend pattern. And if you zoom in, 
into the western equatorial Pacific, uh, you see a relatively strong trend during the last 10 years or so. However, you see this is a region, you know, which exhibits quite some strong internal variability and therefore, you know, the behavior that you see in one region, you know, may not be happening in another region. And actually the trend could be uh, opposite to the trend that you see, for instance, here in the Western Equatorial Pacific. Now, so far we haven't really initialized global change models, which means that we basically uh, looked at the boundary force problem, uh, the problem that basically deals with the increase of greenhouse gas emissions and uh, aerosol concentrations in the atmosphere. Uh, now, if we look at uh, uh, the next 100 years, there are different uncertainties, okay? So AR4, the last IPCC report, basically uh, uh, was the boundary force problem. So it, it, uh, the uncertainty arose mostly uh, from the scenario uncertainty and from the model bias, okay? However, if you look at short lead times, right, then you see that the internal variability is really the dominating uh, uncertainty in the climate change uh, forecasts or slash uh, uh, projections. And uh, especially on interannual and decadal uh, uh, timescales, uh, this is true. Now, however, we should also keep in mind uh, that there may happen some un or unexpected events like volcanic eruptions or anomalous uh, solar radiation. So there is another uncertainty, okay, however, which we probably cannot predict. Second point, mechanisms of decadal variability. So first of all, we need to understand uh, what basically the relative contributions of external and internal forcing is. So here is just northern hemisphere temperature for the 20th century. I put in red the linear trend. Uh, we all believe that the long-term trend is anthropogenic in nature. In blue, we see the uh, running mean. Uh, and you see, I think right away, there is a lot of variability around the long-term trend. And uh, the $64,000 question then is basically, you know, how much did internal decadal variability contribute to the warming during the recent decade, uh, during the recent uh, decades, and I think the jury is still out, you know, about uh, the relative contribution of this internal variability. However, if you just look at this diagram, I think uh, you may get the impression that, you know, some part is or may be driven by internal variability. Now, there are internal modes in the climate system uh, which exhibit low frequency variability. Uh, one of the most important uh, atmospheric modes is the North Atlantic Oscillation, a kind of seesaw in pressure, in surface pressure over the North Atlantic, an interplay of the Icelandic low and the Azorean high. Uh, you see the pressure difference on the left, and I think you see right away uh, the low frequency variability, and this has very significant effects on American, North American, but especially also on European climate. You all know, uh, at least if you live in Europe, if there is a strong North Atlantic oscillation, uh, the 